Join us on Dining Down Under as we enjoy ocean views and some terrific seafood at the Cowrie on the New South Wales Central Coast. Welcome to another show of Dining Down Under. I'm Vic Cherikoff. Benjamin Christie. And Mark McCluskey. And we're cooking recipes tonight, today from the Cowrie Restaurant. Now, it's way up in the hill overlooking the beautiful Terrigal Beach on Sydney's south... Uh, sorry, north central coast, they call it. Central coast. I'll get it right in a minute. <laughs> the um, Terrigal Beach is actually a, a terrific place for fresh seafood, for... In kicking back and, and enjoying the guest houses. The scuba diving is really absolutely fantastic as well. There's some great grey nurse sharks down there, so if you're into scuba diving, get down to Terrigal Beach. The Cowrie restaurant has, um, I suppose, you know, Cowrie, shellfish, it's got um, seafood as its specialty, and they do an amazing seafood platter, which you'll see a little bit later. But, Benjamin, what are you cooking inspired from the restaurant? I'm doing our interpretation of a paella or paella which some people pronounce, I guess. Correctly. The, the paella is going to be having snapper, scallops, prawns, and we're going to be using some bush, bush tomato chutney and some lemon aspen fruits as well. So it's again a whole smorgasbord of seafood. Great totally. dish, great dish. Mark? What I thought I might do, Vic, is demonstrate how to cook a souffle. A lot of people are scared of souffles, but I'm going to show you how to make a fail-safe souffle. So you can slam the door, you can, you can bang the oven, you can do all sorts of things? I wouldn't go that far. Okay. <laughs> we'll work it through. All right, all right. And this one basically rises? It rises, it falls, okay. but it falls in a good way, and then when you want to reheat it, you add a little bit of cream, put it in the oven for two or three minutes, and it's ready to go. So this is souffle 101. <laughs> this is where you start with your souffles on trainer wheels, <laughs> and then, uh, so it, it, is it as light as a normal souffle? It is a little bit denser than a normal souffle. It doesn't quite have the same amount of height, but it's a savoury souffle, so not a sweet be, souffle. And because of the cheese is the slightly it's higher fat. denser, yeah. And okay. as you said, on trainer wheels, that's why I'm doing it. <laughs> and I'm doing a, um, a, a very simple dessert. Uh, it's a tart with the mousse filling. We'll use wattle seed uh, in the mousse a bit of fig to, uh, to garnish it, and um, a little bit of ice cream to finish it. So, meanwhile, have a look at this. The Cowrie Restaurant, Terrigal Beach, Central Coast, New South Wales. Enjoy it. We're up on the ridge overlooking Terrigal Beach and having lunch at the Cowrie. Seafood is their specialty, and they serve up a tower of Balmain bugs, lobster and crab, prawns, yabbies, oysters, scampi, and even some Tasmanian smoked salmon all goes up into a mountain of seafood served with a selection of fresh fruits. A deep fried selection of scallops and prawns and the ever popular potato chips are served with a mayonnaise and a few twists of lemon and lime. It's a great meal to share and here at the Cowrie it's probably the most often ordered specialty. There's always something interesting how about this dragon fruit to finish the tower? Chef kicks off a Thai soup. Onion, scampi and white wine scented with lime and chilli get started poaching before a blue-eyed cod fillet tops the lot, gets covered and then baked. Meanwhile, mussels, prawns, bugs, fish pieces and scampi go into a pan and are topped with a chunky tomato sauce. This is a tagine with potato and chickpeas and thickened with couscous. 
combination of frying and baking cooks the ingredients and fresh herbs are added for those all important aromatics. The dish is served in a bowl with a lid, it's called a tagine. Lastly, our blue-eyed cod comes out of the oven and is ready to be served. It gets plated up straight out of the pan and all of its juices come along. Remember that beautiful scented white wine, lime and chilli. The dish gets a decorative garnish of fried leeks. This might look like a really simple dish, but its scented stock really complements the freshest of fresh ingredients. OK, I've started off by putting in the pan onions or shallots, red desert dust and some butter and sautéing it. Now I'm going to add the rice in. The paella that I'm doing today, I guess, is very similar to a risotto. I'm going to be co cooking the rice in a pan and all the seafood I'm going to do on the barbecue as well. So we'll start the, the rice in the pan. Get lovely golden colour of the rice. With now what we're after here is we want the rice to, to actually become clear. The butter will go into the rice and get ready for the, to add the stock into it. So just a few moments there. Okay. A little bit of white wine into the pan. Starting to sizzle. And we'll start by putting some stock in there. And they'll probably take about, about 15 minutes from the time the rice is finished. And then we'll start on the seafood. Mark, how's the souffle going? Mate, I'm just about to start the souffle, actually. I promised to take you through the souffle. It's what I'm going to do. Over here on the stove, we have the milk. Just brought that just before the boiling point. We're going to turn that off. And to the milk, we're going to add some alpine pepper. If you don't have alpine pepper, you can use conventional salt or pepper lemon rind, lime rind, anything just to give it a bit of a zing. In the pan here, we're going to start off with the butter. We're going to melt the butter. There we go. Moving that around. Get a bit of a bernoisette, burnt or brown butter. That's going to impart some extra flavour. So we've got the butter in there. That smells great. We're going to add the flour. With the flour, we want to stir that in. This is called a roux. There we go. Nice, thick, firm consistency there. We want to cook that out just a touch. So this is much the same as when you're doing refried bunya nuts, where you cook it and the starch in the bunya nut binds. That's right. So you're using the starch in the flour, binding uh, and moistened with butter. Yeah, very, very similar process. Um, we're going to pop in an egg yolk. We don't really want the egg white. That comes later. So we pop in the egg yolk. We're going to stir that in and cook it out just a fraction. There we go. And now we're going to use some goat's cheese. This goat's cheese is ripened to perfection. Can you just see here, just zoom in here, on the layers of the goat's cheese. You see that, how it's firm in the centre, how on the outside it's really, really sort of soft, that's gooey, that's going to be ripe into perfection. So we'll throw a couple of pieces of that in. So um, as a ripe goat's cheese, does this have that really strong goat's flavour? It has um... a, a very strong goat's flavour, quite citric in, in many aspects. So we're and you could also use perhaps a, a sheep's milk Sheep's milk works cheese. really well, yep. Vic, definitely. So we're going to do that, add the milk, and the last stage is adding the egg whites. With the egg whites, we're going to do that a little bit later, mate, just because they're going to flop at this temperature. Mm -hmm. Okay, so what are you doing, Vic? Um, okay, well, getting on with my mousse, which is simply an egg and sugar mix again. Quite, uh, quite simple, this is cold set. So we're whisking. Now, actually, while that whisking is going on, what I need to do is actually make the base or the wattle seed extract. So I'm taking only a small amount of wattle seed because I don't need to make too much at this stage. I add enough water to just cover the wattle. 
So maybe two or three times the, uh, the volume. Oh, that's probably enough as two. And then I'm going to microwave this, which uh, is an ancient Aboriginal method of cooking. Uh, <laughs> and uh, it really works well with wattle seed because it's got to, bring, got to come to the boil to extract the flavour, but you actually don't need to boil it for very long. And unlike coffee, which you never boil to get the good flavour, this doesn't matter if you give it a bit of a boil. So it's I'll just microwave that. Coffee burns or something, doesn't it, when you, when you boil it? At 90 degrees, you start losing the aromatics. OK. So this won't take too long to boil. If you do it in a jar and you keep a good, um, a good eye on it in the microwave, because sometimes it can't boil over, uh, you, can once, you can then put a lid on the jar, put it in the fridge, and you've got beautiful waddle extract made ready to go. Vic, can I just... Um show the viewers. With this mixture here, it's just starting to cook out and it's starting to thicken. Now this is the right temperature that you want to take it off. You don't want to cook this out too much. And when it cools down a bit, we're going to add the egg whites. So just keep stirring away there. There's a little bit of wattle seed as it's boiled. You even can see there that as it did boil up, the level started to go up the side of the jar of the bowl and it could have kept going and over boiled if uh, the bowl wasn't quite so wide for the volume there. I can now let that cool and fold it in as a flavouring to the, uh, the mousse as we move on. Back to you Mark. Yeah, I'm still at crucial stages with this. There's a lot of stirring happening but with souffles to get this happening there is a lot of stirring mate. This dish is fail safe, bulletproof as you might like to call it and it works really well. Okay, the paella rice is coming along really, really well. I think we've got about five or six more minutes there. So while that's cooking away, I'll put the seafood on. Now, I just went down the markets today and I got some snapper, some squid, some prawns or shrimps, some scallops. And I'll start off by just putting a little bit of olive oil over all of it, just so it doesn't stick to the barbie. Once again, serve a side down. You could put lemon, lemon juice on this, or you could put um, any other citrus, just to give it an extra dimension. I'm going to be using lemon aspen later in the paella. So putting all that seafood on the plate. Okay. These are giving it, give the paella a different smoky flavour instead of just being put in the pan. So now the seafood's on. How's the souffle going, Mark? Coming along nicely, actually, Ben. Just starting to whisk my egg whites. We're going to get those nice and firm. We're going to add a bit of rainforest rub. It's got a bit of a crunch there with the nut. It's got a lemon myrtle, a few other interesting flavours there. While I keep whisking, Vic will keep talking. Sure, well what you could actually add to that is a um, little bit of chicken stock, which is the basis, uh, is the flavour that we're looking for. Chicken stock is going to obviously complement the, um, the goat's cheese and the egg mix as well. Um, and then you might maybe put in a bit of lemon rind uh, for some, uh, some acid and some aromatic lemon as well as a replacement for the rainforest rub if you can't get that. Definitely. And um, even a sprinkle of chilli. Um, I'd really suggest just a nice hot chilli, but just a few fines of that. So what we're going to do is add the egg white into here, fold it through gently, try not to kill it too much. There we go. This has cooled down quite dramatically now, so it's the perfect temperature that we want to, um, to bind quite nicely. So it's going to fold that through, being very gentle there. So depending on how much heat you put on there, it's going to be, depend on how brown it's going to end up because of the butter. That's right. Browning you, can, you, the butter. you can get different textures, different flavours uh, from the degreeness of the butter being cooked. This is a burnoisette, a burnt butter stage, so it's going to have really caramel notes. So this souffle might end up anything from uh, a pale yellow all the way through a nut brown. That's correct. With different yep. characters, that's great. And what I've done here is I've just lightly rubbed some butter into the mould. With the souffle, this is imperative, Vic, mm -hmm. as you know, because when the souffle starts to rise, it's going to stick to the edge of the bowl, and we don't want that to happen. We want it to rise quite freely. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I'll just put some of this in here. Then we're going to place it in the oven. It's going to go in the oven around about 200 degrees. 
And with uh, with uh, sweet souffle, where there's uh, where it's going to rise a lot and stay up, you sometimes even put a collar around the souffle. That's right. This isn't going to sort of rise too much, yep. so we should be okay. So I'll pop this on the tray. Just run over to the oven and put it in and uh, how's the tart going Vic? Well the tart's pretty basic, um, I have a pastry case, I've put in my mousse um, flavoured with the wattle seed already, that's just going to get chilled and then I'll end up garnishing one that I prepared earlier because of the um, time it's going to take to set this in the uh, in the chiller. Okay. Benjamin how's it going out there with this seafood mate? Well I've taken uh, all the seafood that was doesn't take long to cook, which is the scallops and the squid off. Fish and prawns are still going. While that's happening, I'll put the bush tomato, tomato chutney into the pan to give it that tom strong tomato flavour. So we're using this instead of using normal tomato paste or tin tomatoes. This just gives us that extra tomatoy flavour in the paella that's and complements the wildfire. That smells great. So you could use a, a ketchup maybe or a chunky tomato. Any of those, any Keep of those are fine. So the bush tomato chutney that you put in there has the akudra or the, the desert raisin in it. It's adding tamarillo caramel notes and um, a, a real richness as well. Now all the, the seafood, probably just take it to about three quarters of, it, of the cooking. Because yep. what we're going to do is we're going to put it straight back into the paella back in the barbecue, bit of cheese, and finish it off with the, with the lid down. Excellent, excellent. We're cooking with gas. I'll leave you with it. Okay. Okay, there we go. Right, the souffle is just about to come out of the oven. Just grab that. It only takes a couple of minutes for this to cook. There we go. Bring that out. It's not risen too much, as I said. It's just formed. It's quite quite dense, I suppose you could say. That's the goat's cheese. It's going to be nice and gooey when, when we dig into it. It's going to have a really nice flavour there, really nice texture. And what I was going to do to offset the flavour and the texture is add some of the, um, the wild rocket, which is quite peppery, quite bitter, mm -hmm. and that will offset also the flavour of the alpine pepper. So this one that you've done here is not... Uh... This one you didn't brown quite so much. Uh, we've done a few souffles today and ended up with, uh, with this. So are you going to take that out, upend it, and then the second baking, melt some cheese over the top? Or That's you could right. do a whole host of things you with could. this from here. You could, definitely. There we go. Okay. Um, well, I'll just keep on uh, slicing and chopping here and starting to garnish up. We're not too far off plating. Benjamin, you've got your uh, seafood pretty much to the end of it. The seafood's gone in. And so the uh, seafood's pulling in the flavours of that sauce. Oh, it's really, really oozy. Like nothing else. So we may also, uh, what I might do with this dessert, once I've got my, uh, my little fig fan working on the, um, for, for my garnish, I might actually top this with a little bit of ice cream. And I'm going to be using um, an ice cream that I've set in a Dariol mould, just a stainless steel cup. I'll immerse that in a little bit of water. Uh, so I can tip the ice cream out and we'll plate up. But while I do that and while the, the guys finish off, we'll just summarise what we're cooking today. Shellfish paella with lemon aspen fruits, twice cooked goat's cheese souffle, served with rocket and alpine pepper, and a wattle seed mousse with fig tart and a gumbly ice cream. <laughs>
Mark's twice cooked goat's cheese souffles made quite unlike those fluffy souffles you have to wait forever for. This one has a beautiful texture, a little like omelette with alpine pepper adding aromatics and zing. We also had a letter. Guys, looking terrific. We also had a letter from um, a viewer, from uh, Scott uh, Tandanini, Toronto, Canada. How about that? Dear Vic, I'm 15 years old and watch you guys every week on PBS. I really like to cook and I want to try some of the Aussie flavours, but I can't find them anywhere. I see you use them on the show every week, so what gives? Well. It's an important point. These native flavours are only just starting to be commercialised. It's only been a couple of decades and they've gone from the wild all the way through to really commercial species. Slowly they're getting into plantations, the volumes are getting up and we're starting to move these products all over the world. So they are coming out and about. We're suggesting substitutes on the website. You can get all these dishes, all the menus and the recipes as well as alternate Ingredients, alternate ingredients to replace the native Australian flavours. So, what did you think of the dessert? Excellent. Really good. Okay. So you'll be able to make that dessert as well that Nigel's enjoying anywhere around the world over coming years. Watch out for them. They are coming to stores near you. Uh, and really it's a whole Australian movement as we grab international fusion cuisine and turn it upside down. Yeah.